in a changing world. Now, <clears throat> when I say I'm changing God in a changing world, you know, what do you observe you know, as we look around in this world today? Many things have changed. Like for example, this uh, mobile phone. We have our iPhone, uh, no, 10, 11, 12, 13. We have a Samsung Galaxy, no, 1, 2, 3, and then 10, 11, 12, or then 21 and 22. They are going to release uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy 22 no, in a few months. No, they upgrade no, the, the internet uh, facilities. They upgrade the, the phones. Many changes have uh, taken place since uh, 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 the pandemic in 2019. The way that we gather in the church, you know, we have a rule together. Changes took place. The business, you know, there is a great change in the business. Social gathering. And then uh, 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 family outing. Mm. You are restricted. They've given you, you know, some rules that how many people should go and enjoy in the beach or in the restaurant or in the movie theater. Changes have taken place in economy, in social, you know, and then even in spiritual life. But God does not change. He is still the Alpha and the Omega. He does not change. He does not change. Every day we see changes in our daily life. No. Every day we see changes in our daily life. So many things have changed. So many things have taken place. But our God still remains the same. He does not change. He does not change. That's why the writer of the Hebrews, you know, the writer of the Hebrews, is, was encouraging the, the, the believers you know, to stand, you know, to have faith in Jesus Christ because many false teachers may say many things about Jesus Christ. But he said, no, 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 no. He is the same. You know, the Jesus that we preach the Jesus that we presented to you is the same Jesus. Another person may bring with a, uh, another Jesus, you know, with another gospel, with another message. But Paul says, no. The Jesus that we presented to you is the same Jesus. Who saved, you no, know, who saved us. Indirectly, you know, the writer of the Hebrew is saying that Jesus, the same Jesus who saved me, is going to save today and even tomorrow you know, he's going to save. The redemptive or the redemp uh, the work of the Holy Spirit and the redemptive work of Jesus Christ will continue. You know, will continue till he comes. And so, we see here that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, we, we, here we see that God still speaks to us. You see, in Hebrews chapter 1, the writer of the Hebrews says that in the olden days, you know, God used the prophets to speak to those people. <clears throat> and then, here is it, now he speaks to us through his son Jesus Christ. God still continued to speak to us through his word. Though physically, no, though physically, Jesus is not present with us. He's not here physically. But the Holy Spirit, because he said that I am going to send another comforter, who will be with you? Who will indwell you permanently? He will be with you. And he will continue to speak. He will continue to work. 
He will continue to, to convict. That is what Jesus told his disciples. That I will continue to speak. No, I, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will continue to work. This evangelism, the work of salvation will continue even if I depart. And the same work of the, the powerful work of the Holy Spirit is still continuing. That we see today. He's still, God still speaks to us. Psalms number 33. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 33. Psalms 33 verse 9. Psalms 33 verse 9. This is what the psalmist says. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. See, God spoke. And then the universe was created. No, The universe came into existence. And then it says that he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. God still continued to speak to us. Psalms 19. No. The heaven declares the glory of God and the firmament shows the handiwork of God. God still continued to speak to us. See? He speaks to us through the nature. He speaks to us through the circumstances. He speaks to us through the sickness and disease. God is speaking to us through this pandemic. That no medicine no, can cure. We, we all know the new variant of this Omicron. No? And even in India, you know, today, no, uh, the, the, in India, the, the COVID positive was uh, uh, 200,000, uh, 200, I mean, uh, 2 lakhs, uh, uh, 2 lakhs, uh, 97,000. Almost uh, uh, 300,000. Almost 300,000. Today, in India, COVID positive. And, vac and vaccination is still going on. No. The vaccination is still going on. Some of them were having the, uh, were, uh, I mean, they, they got the booster. But still then it spreads. It continues. And now uh, it's going to be almost 10,000 no migrants in India. It's spreading fast. Where is the medicine? Medicine cannot help. No, medicine cannot help. This is teaching us that there is God. No, God is still speaking to us. That there is someone who is greater than the medicine. Who is powerful than the medicine. Changes are taking place, right? Changes are taking place. But God still continue, you no, know, sitting on the throne. And looking you know, down on the earth, how so-called his children who were created in, the, in his own image are living. God is still speaking to us. <laughs> Maybe God still speaks through the disaster. God continues to speak through calamities, through sickness. Through nature, God used different means you know, to communicate his message to his people. He still continued to speak to us because he is the same. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And he will continue to speak. He will continue to speak. Matthew chapter uh, 1 verse 28 Matthew chapter 1, verse 28 and 28 to 30. Let's read the, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verse 28 to... Sorry, not uh, Matthew chapter 1.
not verse 28, but uh, verse 23 and 23 to 25. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. You see, he said that he will be with us, right? He will be with us, Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with us, and God is still speaking to us. Speaking to us. Like in the case of Jonah, you know, God used the storm to speak to his servant Jonah because he disobeyed God. See, God used that storm. And not only that, but God used the storm even to, to teach a lesson to those people who were traveling along with the Jonah. They realize that there is God who controls the ocean, who controls the sea, who controls the wind. And Jonah tells us that those who were in the ship, you know, they offer sacrifice. And they believe, you know, and they believe and worship God. Worship God. God continue to speak to us in different ways. The second one is, we, we know, no, we know that God still continue to you no know, bring you no know, new new I mean new year you no know, at the end of every twelve months. Now when we when we study the 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 uh, in the testamental period we see that God was silent for four hundred years. You know? God did not communicate with people for almost four hundred years, but still then they got you no know, new year right. Every, after every 12 months, they got new year, new year, and that goes on for 400 years. Does it mean that since the pandemic continue, no? Does it mean that since new virus, no, comes, or new sickness, uh, no, are, are spreading, does it mean that no, God is silent. Does it mean that there will be no new day? There will be no new week? There will be no new month? There will be no new year? Still, no, God still bless us with a new day, with a new week, with a new month, with a new year. We have entered, right, into a new year, 2000. 22, and this is uh, the third week, third week of this uh, month, you know, New Year. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, you know, we are told that you know, God in his own plan, you know, in his own appointed time, that he sent his son, born of a woman. God is not, no, God is not uh, uh, silent. Many things took place during that uh, 400 silent year. Many changes took place. Many new uh, 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 incidents took place. New ruler, no, came and gone. New emperor rule came, rule and gone. But still then, no, God continued to watch. God continued to watch over his people because that was his plan. That was his plan. And when the, the appointed time came, no, God spoke to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we disobey. Sometimes we go astray. Sometimes we sin. Sometimes we fail to keep God's command. But still then, God bless us with a new day, with a new week, with a new month, 
and with the new year. Because our God is merciful. Our God is forgiving. Our God is long-suffering. He does not deal, deal with us you know, according to our shortcomings, according to our sin, according to our wickedness. He loves us and then He continues to you know, bless us or He continues to add you know, new year, new day, new week and new month into our life. Jeremiah chapter 29, you know, this is what God told the, the Israelites. Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah chapter 29 and then verse 11. No, this is the letter that Jeremiah wrote to the people in exile. No, those who were taken to Babylon. No, the Israelites too, so were taken to Babylon. That God told Jeremiah to write a letter of encouragement. Those who were in Babylon. That no, continue to continue. Not to discourage, not to be discouraged, not to give up hope. Because he said that I control yesterday, I control today and tomorrow, no, I'm in control. That tomorrow, even tomorrow is in my hand. And so Jeremiah wrote this letter to the, the Israelites and says in verse uh, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for wholeness and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. You know, to give you a future and a hope. The people of Israel, not especially Judah, who went to, to Babylon, they were discouraged. They thought that God has given them up. You know. Because now they were in a strange land. Everything is new. You know? The language, the culture, the living uh, uh, style, you know? the, 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 the food, you know? the, eating, the, the eating habits, you know? the culture. Maybe they were going through uh, what we call it a cultural shock you know? in a new land. And so they gave up hope, you know? thinking that Everything is gone. Everything is finished. They thought that they will never go back to Jerusalem. They thought that you know, their life, their children, their future will end in Babylon. But God told them that there is a new year coming. There is a new day coming. There is a new week coming. There is a new month coming. It is me. You no. Know, it is I who brought this disaster because of your disobedience. But God did not give up. See, God did not give up on his people. As a father, you know, as a mother, we discipline our children, but we don't disown them. Right? We don't tell our children that you are not my son or you are not my daughter. Never come back to this house. No. We discipline them. We correct them, we admonish them, and then continue to provide them, continue to love them, continue to protect them, continue to uh, 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 treat them when they are sick, feed them when they are hungry, clothe them when they need clothes, when they need covering. That's how a father or a mother does. The same thing God told the Israelites. I sent you there. So don't lose hope. You see, don't lose hope. You may go through persecution. You may go through trials. You may go through you know, sickness. You may go through pain and sorrow in your life. But don't give up. I'm still, no, I'm still in control. I'm still in control. He said that, I sent you to Babylon, not to destroy you, but to teach you to continue to trust, to continue to repent, you know, continue to turn 
from your wicked ways to give you what hope and a future and a future the people of Israel did not end up in Babylon after 70 years they returned and rebuilt their city rebuild their city rebuild Jerusalem rebuild the temple that's the fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 29 God still sent so after 70 years you know they came back and built the, the city and the temple new year God continued to add you know, continue to give them new year new hope new future and then <clears throat> That the, here we see that we also see that God is in control of this universe and then he still continue to provide God continue to provide God continue to you know, meet your needs he, he told the, the disciples that you see look at the birds of the air in Matthew uh, the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 I still fit them. I still provide them. The birds, they don't go to field for working, right? They don't uh, plant rice and maize and all these things. But God provides. The flower, the plant, they don't sow, they don't cultivate. But God provides the dew, the water. You know, for the plants to grow, for the birds, the animal to survive. Survive. At times, of course, at times we go through pain, we go through suffering, we go through uh, losing of our loved ones. But that does not mean that God is silent. That does not mean that God hide his face from us. Are we going to trust God only when we are in good times? Only when we are you know, sufficient, when we have everything, and then turn our back against God or curse God or uh, you know, uh, complain and murmur against God when we go through pain, suffering, trials in our life? God never give up on his people. God never give up on his people. That's why the writer of the Hebrew says, no, he will continue. No, he will, God will continue to work. The same as God continued to feed his people, no, his salvation, the work of salvation continues. His redemptive work will continue. As God saved people no, in 2021, even in this 2022, God will continue to work. And many will come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many will come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ through our preaching, through our evangelism, through our ministry. If the disciples were you know, saved, Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter uh, 1 and Acts chapter 2. When Peter preached 3,000, 5,000 people were saved. The same Jesus is going to save people even today. Even now. Even tomorrow. God is not only you know, uh, 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 interested on the physical side. But he is also interested in in the spiritual life of those lost souls that's why he came that's why he came he continued to save the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that shed on the cross will continue to be applicable it will continue to be applicable and so we, we see that God continue no God continue to heal God continue to protect. God continue to provide. God continue to rescue. God continue to secure. Now in Matthew chapter 14, no, when we see in Matthew chapter 14, the feeding of uh, uh, the 5,000, 
after the, pe after the people you know, filled their stomach, still there, there, there was a leftover. Still there was leftover. Nothing is lacking you know, in the sight of God. There is always you know, leftover. There is always leftover. And then in John chapter 6 verse, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter uh, 6 and then verse, uh, verse 57 and 58. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. Now, this, Jesus is talking about the spiritual aspect of an individual. See, whoever believes in me, whoever abides in me, and I abide in him or her, will continue to live, will continue to feeding on me. That means believe in me, trusting in me will continue to enjoy, will continue to live. Of course, you know, we, we know that the, the, the prophets, the disciples, the early Christians, they're all gone. They're all gone. Physically, they are no more with us. But they are, you know, they are living you know, eternally with Jesus Christ. And we, you know, who are alive today, even if we lose our life, physical life on this earth, we are going to you know, continue living with Jesus Christ today. And tomorrow, you know, people, children who will be born and who will be saved tomorrow, the same thing. Unless they believe Jesus Christ as their personal savior, there is no salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no salvation under heaven. No, no, no other name has been given no, under heaven whereby a person can be saved except believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Except believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He ruled, he is ruling, and then he will continue to rule. Yesterday, Christ came and died for us. Now he is preparing a place for us. And tomorrow he is going to come to take us to be with him, not to be with him eternally. The Alpha and the Omega, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, you know, he came to die. He continued to live. Today, he is saving, he is working. He is preparing a place for us, and tomorrow He is coming to take us to be with Him forever. That's the God that we are worshipping. That's the, the eternal God. That's the unchanging God that we are worshipping you know, in a changing world. You know, in a changing world. Many things took place. Many changes have taken place. You know, But our God does not change. Jesus does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And so as, we, as, as God has added a new year into our life, you know, let us continue to live for Him. Let us continue to obey Him. Let us continue to follow His footsteps. People may come and tell so many things. But let us not you know, waver. Let us not be shaken. That's what in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 13. You know, we see in verse uh, 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 5. And then verse 6. It said that verse 5. Keep your life free from love of money. And be content with what you have. For he has said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sickness may come. Poverty may come. No, sometimes uh, wealth may come. We may, we may become rich. But he said, no, don't be swept away by the love of money, by the, 
by the love of reputation, by the love of uh, uh, fame. Because I will never leave you, right? He will never leave us. And then verse 6. So we can confidently, confidently say it. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? See? Since he is the almighty God, since he is the eternal God, same as the Father and the Holy Spirit, he said, why should I fear? If he feeds the, uh, uh, the bird, if he uh, uh, enables the, the lilies of the valleys, the plants and uh, trees to grow, though they don't work, you and I are more valuable, more important than the birds of the air, the wild animals, the plants of the field. And so, Indirectly, the writer of the Hebrew is telling us that things may not change. The environment may change. The situation may change. But he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so verse 7, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now in chapter uh, 11 of uh, Hebrews, no, he, the writer of the Hebrew lists all the heroes of faith. Now he's telling us that you remember them, no, learn a lesson from them. How changes took place. But my disciples, my servants, they never change. No, they continue to trust God. They, they face opposition. They face death. They face persecution. But still they hang on. He says, hang on. Hang on, whatever the situation it may be. Hang on to Jesus Christ. And so, do not, in verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by food, which have not benefited those devoted to them. Is it? Don't let the circumstances, the situation, you know, the teachings, Shake your faith. You know, weaver your faith. Continue. You know, continue to hang on to Jesus. Continue to trust him. Continue to put your faith in him. Because he will never leave you. Right? He will never leave you. But he will take care of you. you know, he will take care of you. I believe that the God that I'm worshiping is the Alpha and Omega. And as he took care of us in the last year, I believe that even in this new year, no, he will be in control. Let us make him the master of our life. Let him be the captain of our life. That he will lead us through, no, through the storm, through the sunny, through the wind. No, that we will come out, no, we will come out as a victorious Christian. Where, when we stand before him, that we will hear the wonderful words, the beautiful words from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ, no, that thou good and faithful servant, thou good and faithful servant. So may God bless each one.